Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. As we get started this morning, would you join me in prayer? God, thank you for this time. Thank you that we can come together as a family and we can hear from you. I pray that your presence would fall on this place. And beyond the words that I speak, that you would speak to each heart here. So we give you this time. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So I want to take you back with me to the summer of 2005. I was two years into my marriage. I had two kids at the time, a three-year-old and three-month-old, and I was working towards my college degree. And everything was great. I had everything I needed. And from anyone from the outside looking in, it would seem that I had it all together. But then I got sick, very sick. And because of this, I felt like I was failing at everything that life was needing from me. I was completely exhausted. There were days when it was just work to get off of the couch. It got so bad that I knew there was something seriously wrong. I thought, I'm probably dying. Well, this continued with no improvement, and so I did what any of us would do. I went and saw the doctor, and he did his checkup and said, everything looks fine. You seem fine. But I continued in this with no improvement, and so ended up going into urgent care. And I explained to the doctor there that I had a huge lack of energy. I was having stomach aches. I had pain running up and down my back. Please tell me what's wrong with me. But he said, everything looks fine. Yet this persisted with no relief, and so I found myself back at urgent care, and on the second trip, the doctor said something that would begin my journey into figuring out what this thing is that I was dealing with. And the doctor said, I think you may be dealing with an anxiety disorder. What? This didn't make sense. I mean, I was worried, but I was worried about my health, and I was physically sick. But because he said this, I began researching anxiety. And in doing so, I found that everything I was experiencing, fatigue and muscle tension, trembling, nausea, they're all symptoms that can occur when facing high levels of persistent anxiety. And on top of these physical reactions I was experiencing, I was trying to manage the continual running in my mind of what ifs. All the worst case scenarios. What if this? What if this? And I never knew before this moment that anxiety could be anything more than just worry. And so it gave me a sense of relief knowing that I wasn't alone. There's information out there and I could start finding some help. I would love to say that I found a fix and that was that, put the past behind me and move on. But like most things in life, it just doesn't come that easy. But I've also learned that fighting through it is worth it. So I have two things I'm hoping for today. The first is that if you are someone who struggles with anxiety or depression, I want you to know that you are not alone and that you're going to be okay. The second is if you are someone who loves another who struggles in this way, I want you to know that you are not alone and you're going to be okay. 
It is a struggle to live with anxiety, and it is a struggle to love someone dealing with anxiety or depression. But there is hope, because God is a faithful God who is always with us. So there are pieces of this continual journey that I've been on that have been so healing and so helpful for me. But there have also been pieces that have caused greater hurt and put up barriers to making progress in this area. And so I want to share just a few of those with you today. The first thing I've learned is that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Not the Bible. Now, before you think I'm throwing out scripture, or before you start throwing your Bibles at me, (laughs) I want to make it clear that I love scripture. But I love it when I allow it to be what it is, and I don't ask it to be something it is not. Let me explain. As I wrestled with the knowledge that I was being taken out by this monster in my mind called anxiety, I did what I always thought I should do. I clung to the Bible. I would obsessively search out those passages that spoke to my particular situation because in doing so, I thought I would be healed. So the passage that I grabbed a hold of of in in an attempt to make it my lifesaver was Philippians 4, 6 through 7, which reads, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your requests to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. They're beautiful words. And I read it religiously because I believed that if I meditated on the words long enough, I would be fixed. This, however, wasn't the case. It wasn't fixing me. It wasn't healing me. And I believed there was nothing wrong with what I was doing. So my conclusion was there was something wrong with me. I wasn't doing enough. I wasn't believing enough. I wasn't following God close enough. So instead of finding life and healing in these words, I was finding accusation and I was finding shame. I would read this passage, but then my mind would start saying, this is don't be anxious about anything. Not try not to be. Figure it out. If you really believed this, you wouldn't have anxiety. If you were just more thankful when you came before God, he would take it away. Not getting better? What did you do that would have God leave you alone in this state? I felt ashamed. What I was looking for in scripture, hope and life, I was not finding. Thankfully, God is never content to leave us where we are. And what I didn't know at the time, but I know now, is that the words contained in the Bible are powerless without the word. The word who is in the beginning, the word who was with God, and the word who is God. The word who is Jesus. This does not mean I have a low view of scripture. It just means I have a very high view of Jesus. So yes, we should search the scriptures. Yes, the words are beautiful and they have truth. Yes, they can lead to healing. But they are only beautiful. 
They are only true. They are only healing if they point us to Jesus. You see, what we find are signposts in Scripture. But we can't stay at the signposts. We have to let it lead us to someone greater because that is what Scripture intends to do. Jesus himself makes claim to this in John 5, 39, when he is confronting the religious leaders on their wrong thinking. Jesus says here, you search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life, but the scriptures point to me, yet you refuse to come to me to receive this life. If we stay at the signposts, we will never arrive at the one we are truly needing. So what do I do now with this? Now when I read this passage in Philippians, I read it not as a formula, but as a beautiful principle laid out before us. When it says, don't be anxious about anything, it is not a command. It is a statement on who Jesus is. We don't need to be anxious, but why? Because Jesus is love, and in love there's nothing to fear. So I continue to search the scriptures, and I search them to find the reality of who God is and who he says that I am, and where I have found the clearest signposts pointing me to God has been in the Psalms. I love this collection of songs and poems because it isn't sanitized. It remains raw and human. It doesn't sugarcoat the reality of troubles and pain, but it does show the closeness that can occur between God and man, even in the midst of darkness. And you won't find quick fixes here. But as I'm sure you all know, quick fixes are not real life. So I want us to look at one of my favorite passages in in Psalms, and it's Psalm 139, beginning at verse 7. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. And if I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me. And your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. And what I find here is that it's not just that God knows everything, but he knows me. And it's not just that God is everywhere. He is everywhere with me. And it's not just that God created everything. He created me. Believing this truth about God hasn't made my anxiety disorder vanish. But it has silenced the accusations that have long desired to take me out. You see, my faith is not a quick fix. And it's not in finding the perfect formula. My faith is in the God who knows me and is everywhere with me. Even when my mind finds itself surrounded by darkness, it is never so dark that it can hide me from him. And because he is good, and because his perfect love casts out fear, there is peace knowing he is everywhere I am. 
So the more I've experienced God as patient, kind, and long-suffering, the more I've begun to see myself as worthy. If God created me and knows me and is committed to being everywhere I am, what does it say about me? It says that God sees me as worthy of his love. Therefore, if God created you and knows you and is committed to being everywhere you are, what does that say about you? It says that God sees you as worthy of his love. So when your mind is at peace, you are worthy of his love. And when your mind is an anxious mess, you are still worthy of his love. This has been a long, hard journey in belief. I've not always felt it. There are times when it's hard to even believe it. But even then, you just have to give yourself a break. Do you notice how sometimes it's the simple things that matter most? That hope is so often found in glimmers. Well, I found my next step in a simple statement. Go buy more socks. (laughs) This was actually a defining moment for me. As I was sitting in my counselor's office, I was telling her about all the things I felt inadequate to be and to do. I couldn't keep up with the house. I couldn't have home-cooked meals on the table. I couldn't keep up with all my schoolwork. I said, as I sit here right now with you, there are no more clean socks in my house. The counselor stopped me at this and looked me in the eye, and she said, when all of the laundry is dirty, go out and buy some more socks. Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's talk for that. And it may sound silly, but that one statement lifted a burden and set a part of me free. And that's because it went so far beyond laundry. In essence, what she was saying is, you have to give yourself a break. And that one phrase has stayed with me now for over a decade. So whatever you are holding so tightly to this morning, you have permission to loosen the grip. You have permission to give yourself a break. Because when all the laundry is dirty, you can go buy some more socks. And the people around you, the people who are struggling, they don't need us to fix them. They need us to give them permission to breathe. And I needed to hear this truth, the truth that I didn't have to look a certain way, be a certain way, have everything picture perfect, and the truth will set you free. But the thing about anxiety is that when you are overtaken, your mind is in a battle against itself. One part of you knows that what you are thinking is not reasonable, it's not rational, Yet even so, the truth is so often just out of reach. Okay, I'm going to pause here for a minute to ask you a question. Do we have anyone in the audience today who is a fan of the show Friends? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So Friends is one of my favorite shows, and if you need to judge me later on that, you can. 
That's okay. And one of my favorite parts about this show are Phoebe's songs. And I was, I was thinking through, why are they so funny? It's because she has a way of just laying the truth out there. She doesn't sugarcoat it. She kind of just says what it is and how it is, whether it's about what really happens to barnyard animals, whether she's just simply expressing the joys of parenthood. In my experience, telling yourself the truth cannot be a one and done exercise. You have to have the truth on repeat, kind of like this. <laughs> okay, that's the last clip I have for you today. I know, I'm sorry. In all seriousness, if you tell yourself the truth once and it doesn't stick, say it again. And then say it again. Flood your mind with truth. In my experience, the only way to move out the ugly and the lies is to make no space for it to live. It's been important living with anxiety to ask myself, what am I feeding my mind? You see, it doesn't work to just water your mind occasionally with beauty and life and truth. We need a daily flooding of truth. We need this to be able to wash out the fear and the doubt and the anxiety and I know when I let this slip, I know when I'm not intentional about pouring in truth, my mind becomes a desert again. And I've learned the hard way that it is a matter of survival for me to have truth on repeat. This can look a lot of different ways. For me, it's been flooding my mind with music that speaks truth about who God is and who he says I am. It's having words of truth visible around me during the day, at home or at work. I have a few pictures of things I have up, of fear not who I am in Christ, even my water bottle that reminds me to tell anxiety not today, also that I believe in Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> it can be pouring truth into your mind by reading scripture and other books. And it can also be saying truth out loud to yourself throughout the day. But if you are like me, or you've struggled in this way, you may be asking, but what about those hardest times? Those times when you are so far hidden that you don't even know what the truth is anymore. I've been there. And I know I may be there again. In that space where I can't trust the truth that I am telling myself. When my mind is playing tricks on me. Let me encourage you in this. When you can't trust your own truth, 
It's time to phone a friend. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. God did not make us to be alone. We need him, but we also need each other. In the midst of my deepest anxieties, I have needed others to step in and defend me by speaking the truth over me when I was not strong enough to speak it for myself. I've had to choose to believe what others say when I know that I am down for the count. And God has blessed me with people in my life, friends and family, who are willing to step in and carry some of that burden for me when I couldn't. But I have had to be willing to ask for help. There have been moments of desperation when I've asked my husband, please just tell me the truth. There have been moments when all I could do was sit and to listen to him as he would repeat, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. So sometimes all we have the strength to do is to put one foot in front of another. But let me tell you this. Jesus is there in the dark with you so you are never alone. And because Jesus is fiercely for you and will never forsake you, you are going to be okay. I know it can be hard. It can be very hard. But there is hope available and there is healing achievable. I've learned three things about healing and growing through anxiety. The first is that everyone's healing can look different. There is no one size fits all. Every person is different. Every path is different. And so every journey to healing will look different. And there's no shame in your journey. There's no shame in seeking counseling. If you need it, get it. And don't be discouraged. If the first person you meet with isn't a good fit, keep trying. There's no shame in taking medication. Talk to your doctor. Be open and transparent about your struggles. I've seen in my own life that God can use the innovation of modern medicine to help us along. And there is no shame in taking time to do what you love. Think through the things that fill you up. Put them on your calendar and guard them with everything you have. Don't let the busy and the hurry of life rob you of the things that fill your soul. The second thing I've learned is to not underestimate people. Whenever I've been willing to share, whenever I've been willing to be vulnerable, I have found that others can relate. I used to think I was crazy all on my own, but everyone's dealing with their own crazy. So don't underestimate people. It's okay to let others be strong when you can't be. The third thing I've learned is to not try to do it alone. Isolation is the enemy of health. We are not made to be alone. We need each other. So take time to identify your go-to people. The ones who can step in and defend you. 
It's okay to find your tribe. I want to leave you with this truth today. God is for you and not against you. And because God is for you, there is nothing that can stand against you. Not even your own anxiety. You can never escape from God's spirit. You can never get away from his presence. If you go up to heaven, he is there. And if you go down to the grave, he is there. If you ride on the wings of the morning, if you dwell by the farthest oceans, even there his hand will guide you and his strength will support you. You could ask the darkness to hide you and the light around you to become night, but even in darkness, you cannot hide from him. To him, the night shines as bright as the day. Darkness and light are the same to him. Let's pray. God, thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are faithful, that you are committed to us, that you don't promise us an easy road, but you promise to travel the road with us. So I pray for each person here, each struggle they're facing, that in this moment, you would give them confidence that you are there and that they're going to be okay. And we can pray this because of your son, Jesus. So I pray a blessing over the rest of this day. It's in your mighty name we pray. Amen.